Hi YouTube, this is Melissa from Andrew Melissa O. And today I wanted to take the time to talk about my health journey. How I went from eating animal products to eating a plant-based diet now. So growing up actually, I didn't really eat that many animal products. I mean, I had dairy, but we didn't eat, we didn't drink milk growing up. So basically my parents, didn't feed us certain things because they thought it was unhealthy. So when we were really, really young, we didn't have any milk. We grew up drinking soy milk. We didn't eat red meat. We ate just chicken and turkey. And we had like brown rice and broccoli and mashed potatoes. My mom made really good mashed potatoes. I loved her mashed potatoes when I was a kid. We usually had it with like corn and chicken nuggets. So, I mean, it wasn't like the best thing to be eating, but it was really tasty. and. Anyways, so we pretty much ate that growing up and we ate some traditional dishes that my grandmother would cook, both of my grandmothers, because um, my family is actually Puerto Rican, Puerto Rican, Puerto Ricanian. They're, my grandparents were all born in Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico. I don't know which way is better to say. Anyway, my all my grandparents were born in Puerto Rico and so we would have arroz con gandules or pasteles. Um, they would make chicken for us because they knew we didn't eat uh, pork or cow. So they were pretty accommodating for that when we were growing up, which was really, really nice. Um, but we d I definitely, definitely, definitely ate tons and tons and tons of cheese. I love cheese. I really, really love queso blanco, which is a very salty cheese, and I would literally eat the whole thing by myself. So I would eat queso blanco, or queso, de, queso de papa, which is like a cheddar cheese. Um, but anyway, so we, when we were really young, we ate things like that. And then kind of in our teen, like pre-teen, teenage years, we ate a little bit differently where we, I mean, we would have Kraft macaroni and cheese once in a while, things like that, you know, the little cans, but we always had like the vegetarian version without the meat in it, because it was always like spaghetti and meatballs, like whatever it was. Um, so we pretty much, we ate healthier, but we didn't eat the healthiest, in my in my opinion. But then, um, when I went to college, oh my gosh, it was like a miracle. Because for a while, I was eating literally one meal a day in high school. Like I wouldn't eat breakfast, because I was never hungry first thing in the morning. And then I didn't ever take lunch with me, so I barely had lunch. And then after school, if I had money, I would get like th two slices of pizza and a soda or a slice of pizza and a soda or, you know, little treats like that. Um, and sometimes actually, if I did have money, I would get an egg sandwich in the morning before school because I wasn't hungry first thing in the morning. But then after taking the train to school and then walking to school, I would get hungry. So I usually have like an egg and cheese sandwich or just an egg sandwich. Uh, on a roll from like those little stands that cost like a dollar or something ridiculous like that. So anyway, that's pretty much like high school where, but for the most part, like on most days, I didn't eat anything until we had dinner at home, which was usually takeout, either like Chinese or there was this place called 107, Cafe 107 where I lived and it was like, they had, it was like South Mex kind of Southern, cause they had like Crail chicken and shrimp or like, cornbread with jalapeno in it so things like that and we would get that on occasion but then when i went to college oh my gosh oh my gosh it was like literally food 24 7. it was awesome i would go there all the time we, i was on a meal plan and i would have breakfast like usually would have i was i was a music major so we had this mandatory 8 a.m sightseeing class so I was like, I would literally roll out of bed and <laughs> rush to class. Like 10 minutes, I would get out, get up 10 minutes before class started and like rush my butt over to get there on time. And then after that, I would go to breakfast and then go to my room and like sleep if I didn't have a class. But anyway, so I would do that and I would eat, but I would eat like a huge plate of eggs with like toast. And sometimes I'd get an omelet. And I actually, when I was in college, I did eat some bacon because everyone was like, bacon's so great. So I ate some bacon sometimes, but I usually have mostly eggs and potatoes. They had like these um, hash brown potatoes that was like onions and pepper and potatoes, really good. 
but I would have like a ginormous plate full. Like it was probably the equivalent of like six eggs. It was crazy. I don't know what I was thinking. But anyway, so I would have that and then I'd have a big lunch and I'd have a big supper and sometimes for supper I didn't know what to choose. So I would get one of everything. I would get like a burrito and then I would get like the macaroni and cheese and then I would get, you know, salad and then, because the salad obviously was healthy, and then I would get ice cream for dessert, of course, and maybe a muffin, the healthy choice, the sergeant choice is what it was called. Um, so I went to Boston University. Um, anyway, so I completely, completely ate tons and tons of foods, and on top of that, I drank a significant amount of alcohol, more than I'd like to say was, you know, healthy. So anyway, I did this for to like four years where I kind of wasn't paying attention to my health. I wasn't really paying attention to anything. And also in addition to that, when I went to school, they, they actually, it was mandatory to get vaccines or something. I mean, we had religious exemption when I was growing up, so I didn't get vaccinated except for like two shots when I was a really bit bitty baby. So this is like totally another thing, but I did get vaccinated and I remember getting sick for like a month after I got the mumps, measles, and rubella. I was totally sick and I had like a sore throat for like a month, it was crazy. But anyway, um, after, like I kind of wish I hadn't done that. So my senior year, I was living off campus with two of the girls I went to school with and I totally drank like almost every day. I'd have like a gin and tonic at night and then I would eat like, you know, pasta. I was making food for myself so it wasn't quite as much as I did when I was in the dining, like as much as I ate when I was in the dining hall. But I also worked for Starbucks so I got, you know, free beverages from Starbucks which I didn't usually pick the healthiest ones. Like I would be drinking the white mocha lattes, you know, things like that. And so that wasn't super, super healthy. But anyway, long story short, after like all this abuse to my body, my body was like, what the heck, what's happening? So I actually started getting a lot of yeast infections. And I was like, what is this? This is weird, this is, I don't understand. So I started going to, I went to a gynecologist and I was like, yeah, I'm having like this weird discharge, what's going on? And he was like, oh yeah, here's some, medicine like these pills you take and they'll clear up so I took that and then it like kept happening though and then in addition to that I started getting like super super itchy down there super dry skin and to the point like it would be so dry and like very itchy that there would be like lesions that would happen and it was really painful to pee because it was like right in between where your private area and your butt <laughs> your butthole is this is probably too much information for some people but it was like right in your um basically your root chakra where your root chakra is i would get like cuts there and so whenever i peed it would like burn so badly and was horrible 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 and it was just like itchy all the time and i was like what is happening what's happening to me this has never happened to me in my life this is awful so again i went to the gynecologist and you know everything came normal my pap smear but he was like okay we'll we'll do a biopsy of the skin which by the way hurts so badly so so badly so like he put like this numbing stuff but it didn't really numb anything it didn't feel like it was numbing and like he took like a piece of skin and it really hurt so basically they looked at the skin and they diagnosed me with spongiatic dermatitis so when I heard that I was like what the heck is spongiatic dermatitis and the doctor told me that it's basically a form of eczema. And I was like, okay, so how do you heal from this? And he's like, well, we can try this steroid cream. And I was like, okay, well, what if that doesn't work? And he said, well, then we'll try another one. And I was like, okay, hold the phone. What? You're not sure if this is gonna work? And then we're gonna try other ones to make sure to see if they would work? What? That doesn't make any sense. I've never had this before. You know, my private area was totally fine. Like everything was going good. And now I'm like having yeast infections and spongiatic dermatitis. What? No, not okay with me. So then I was like, you know what? I need, I need to change something. I need to do something because I'm not okay with just using a steroid cream and then seeing if that one works. And if that doesn't work, use a different one. That doesn't make any sense to me. It didn't make sense to me. Cause I was like, no, this is not okay. I can't have like lesions on my private area 
and have it burn so badly every time I go to the bathroom. No, not okay. So anyway, I decided with my roommate to do the master cleanse. This is the lemon juice with the maple syrup and the cayenne, and then you drink like the salt water to like as a laxative. Anyway, I did that. It was really intense, but I did it for seven days. I was really proud of myself because of my roommate. She lasted one day, not well, sort of. I, well, as I said, I worked at Starbucks, so I got like you know some some things that I was able to take home sometimes and. I had taken home like a little treat and she saw it in the fridge and she just like devoured it. So, but that was difficult because she was quitting um, smoking, drinking and coffee and food all at once. So it was like really intense withdrawal for her. Like for me, luckily it was only like the drinking and the food and I wasn't really addicted to coffee. I'm not like, I was never like a, I need my coffee in the morning. Never ever that, that it happened to me. So I stuck with it for seven days <clears throat> and I worked which was really impressive I thought anyway so I did that and while I was doing that I read the book called skinny bitch and I was like oh I wonder what this is about like let me just check it out and see and so I read it and it talked about being vegan and how like if you want to be thin like it's better it's it's great to adopt a vegan diet because you'll lose weight and I was like okay well let me try it so I broke the fast after seven days and I broke it correctly. You know, you're supposed to do like, I think it says like you have to drink orange juice and then like vegetable broth, but not the vegetables. So you're not supposed to eat that because it's not good to eat the food because you could hurt yourself. Anyway, so I continued like following the protocol because I wanted to make sure I broke the fast correctly. And then I decided to be vegan and not eat any animal products or anything like that, which wasn't really hard for me because when I was living off campus, I wasn't really buying many animal products because it was expensive. So I was mostly eating like vegetables anyway and pastas and rice and beans and bread. I think I was having sandwiches with cheese at the time, but that wasn't like super, super, super expensive. But like I definitely wasn't eating like all this other stuff that like I wasn't eating steaks or anything. I never, I've never had a steak in my entire life, nor do I plan on ever eating a steak ever anyway. But so I, I changed my diet, I went vegan, and then I kept looking for more answers because as I was eating vegan, my, I was still struggling with the spongiotic dermatitis. So then I read, came across this book, The Raw Detox Diet, and I was like, hmm, I wonder what this is about. So I started incorporating that, and it was basically just raw foods. And I was like, okay, this is interesting. So basically that book kind of led me down this rabbit hole of raw foods and how foods can heal and I kind of went through this whole few years where I was trying to do raw foods and then I was like oh there's the candida cleanse because maybe with the yeast infections and all that stuff I'm having like candida issues or you know and then I was thinking about the omega-3s and I was trying to eat salmon but I didn't really want to eat the salmon because I was like no or like I don't know it was just like a lot of kind of experiments for from 2010 to probably 2000 13 I want to say where I was kind of going back and forth from being like a vegetarian pescatarian vegan like I was going back and forth from those because I was just like okay well the candida cleanse says to eat meat and veggies but I was like I can't eat meat maybe I could just eat fish and maybe eggs and I tried eating eggs but I couldn't I was like oh my gosh the chicken no I can't do this anyway I know like it doesn't get fertilized but I don't know just like psychologically I was like I can't eat eggs like no no this isn't this doesn't make any sense to me so I just couldn't eat eggs anymore. So basically then I found 30 bananas a day, the website from my colon hydrotherapist. She was like, oh yeah, you're really into health. Like, have you ever heard of like 30 bananas a day? Like the raw fruits, the raw foods, like mostly fruits, things like that. And then I came across 801010 by Dr. Graham and so in 2013, I ended up going to the Woodstock Fruit Festival. And then, like by this time actually, through all those things I had been doing, my spongiotic dermatitis had gone away. And sometimes it would flare up, but very rarely. Like at this point, I was pretty much healed in 2013. But I was still struggling with my body image issues and like losing weight. So I was like, oh, let me look at this 801010. 10. 
And so I went to the Woodside Fruit Festival and I felt great eating just raw fruits and vegetables, mostly fruits. And so for a while I was just doing the smoothie and the, the salads and things like that. And so anyway, so that whole incident that happened to me after my senior year of college kind of led me to where I am now. So now I don't eat completely raw and I'm doing like, that's something that I struggled with for a really long time because I know like it, it's the easiest to digest in the body. Like it's, it's simple. It's like a simple sugar, like super, super easy to digest. Doesn't take long to digest. So that's really, really nice about fruits. But for reasons that have to do with our life, the way we're living, that's not the most convenient right now. So we are eating whole food plant-based. And I actually took the, I actually have a plant-based nutrition certification through E. Cornell, um, through Dr. Ta um, Colin, T through Dr. Campbell, his program. And that was pretty awesome. I felt like I learned a little bit. I mean, I, I knew a lot of the information already, but it was really nice to just get all the information reiterated to why I'm eating the way I want to eat or why I'm eating the way I'm eating. So anyway, my spongy attic dermatitis is completely healed. I have not suffered from any yeast infections like for years. So yeah, I think the last one I had was in 2013. So it's been quite some time because now we're in 2018. So that's what? five years. Five years I haven't had any yeast infections and I've been feeling vibrant. My skin has cleared up. I also did the fast, which really, really helped too. I felt like that really helped clean out a lot of things that I had been holding on to. And I still have a lot of work to do, but I'm feeling better than ever. And anyway, that is kind of the story of what brought me to here and why I'm so passionate about health and fitness and moving your body and getting outside and having the sun touch your skin. So anyway, I just wanted to share that story with you because that was something I struggled with for a really, really long time. It was really painful. It was really awful. And now I haven't had any of those issues. Never, ever, especially being with Andrew. We pretty much got together in September of 2014 and not once have I experienced a yeast infection with him and not once I mean not I mean not with him but you know what I mean like I've not had any symptoms of anything like that since being with Andrew so that's four years so I'm I'm so grateful that I was able to put in the work and was able to heal my body because I never actually used the steroid cream honestly because I didn't think it would work I was like, this is may work and it might not work. So what's the point of using it? But anyway, that was my choice. And this was my experience that I had with the spongiotic dermatitis and the yeast infections. And eating a high carb, low fat diet has drastically, drastically helped. Helped me so, it's helped me so much. I can't say anything higher than that. And I know like so many people have healed themselves by eating a high carb, low fat diet, whether it be, you know, raw fruits and vegetables or, you know, starches, but everything is like high carbs, low fat. So if you're struggling with something like that, it might be a good idea to just take a look and maybe experiment with your body to see how it goes. Cause I know definitely for a while things got worse for me before they got better. And once they did, like now I don't struggle with that at all anymore. You know, so it's maybe a good thing to take a look at for yourself and, you know, just do research. Just try something, experiment with yourself a little bit. I know for, for me with the fast that I did for 108 days, people were like, oh my gosh, it's unhealthy. You're, you could really hurt yourself. And I feel better than ever. You know, I feel vibrant. I have gained a little bit of weight since doing the fast and I don't feel like super, super light and like kind of energized like I did on the fast but you know that's something that I need to figure out that balance but I'm always searching and I'm always wanting to better myself regarding my health and fitness so anyway I just wanted to share that story with you because that's literally what brought me to where I am today dealing with that whole spongiotic dermatitis and the yeast infections and I believed in myself and believed in my body that it could heal so anyway 
if you're struggling with something like that, please comment below. Tell us your story. We'd love to hear from you. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And so don't forget, subscribe to our channel because that way you can get notifications of when we post new videos, okay? So I hope you have a marvelous day. And if you're healing from something like I was, I wish you the best of luck and just do the research. It's, you know, for me, I find that eating a whole food plant-based diet is really the way because it helps the environment, it saves the lives of the animals, and it makes you feel great. And it's also really affordable. So there's like a whole bunch of reasons why I eat a plant-based diet, um, or vegan diet, you can say. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so, so, so much for watching and have a wonderful evening. All right, bye.